All right, guys, so check this thing out. This is a vapor chamber on an ITX cooler. We're here at CryoRig, and the first thing I want to mention about this company is we always get requests to review their products. It doesn't matter if it's in an ITX cooler roundup, it doesn't matter if it's in a full-size cooler roundup. Yes, we are sort of opening our perspective a little bit more to CryoRig, and they are actually trying to get further into North America because getting their products in North America has always been extremely challenging but that's about to change. So I want to talk about this. This is their new C5 cooler, and it is only about 55 millimeters high. Now, why go with a vapor chamber? Well, first of all, this is something that is being discussed everywhere here at Computex, and it was sort of the discussion that started last year. Basically, heat pipes in a lot of ways have reached their maximum capacity. And in an ITX cooling solution like this, what they wanted to do is they wanted to maximize the heat transfer between the CPU and the fins. And unfortunately, for their situation here, well, traditional heat pipes just wasn't going to do it. So the vapor chamber. It is a very, very slim vapor chamber that has allowed them to push this tiny, tiny cooler all the way up to 165 watt TDP. And it's also been tested, at least in the copper design. This thing weighs an actual ton when you compare it to its very, very small size. So the copper version has been tested all the way up to 185 watts on a 14900K. And that's just bananas when you look at the TDP for a lot of other similar coolers. You're looking at 65 watts, 95 watts. Well, that vapor chamber is what accomplishes that. The other thing that they've done here is they've actually added some very, very small grooves to the base plate. You know, the traditional discussion about these base plates is like the more mirror finish, the better. Well, they've gone the exact opposite route. So what these micro grooves do is they help disperse the thermal compound in a more even way. So you basically get better, at least technically, contact between the CPU IHS and the base plate. And all of this talks towards getting that heat away from the CPU as quickly as possible, right? So it goes into the base plate, vapor chamber, then up into the fins, ASAP. Another thing that they did here, and another reason why they use the vapor chamber, is to get 100% contact between the vapor chamber and the fin stack. If you use a traditional heat pipe, you have to solder the heat pipes, and it's just not as efficient when it comes to transferring from one medium to another. Finally, the fan. They're using a 3000 RPM fan here, which is quite high, but at the same time, if you can't hear it here, but it is very, very quiet. The most interesting thing about it is you're gonna notice a couple of vibration pads here in a very unique configuration instead of being under the cooler. And that is because you can simply pop this thing off and put it back on with a single hand. And look, it's, it's so strong, it can lift this whole thing up, which is a solid like five to seven pounds. It's a very, very unique way to go about this. Actually, maybe it's not unique. We've seen clip-on fans before. Another thing I wanted to mention here is just the ease of installation. Because of this clip-on fan, you have four points of installation on both AMD and on Intel. You just go directly in with your screwdriver and it's all done. What about pricing? Well, it comes in two versions. The copper one with its higher TDP and super beautiful looks, well, that is 60 bucks. Then you have the typical aluminum version, which is a little bit lighter. Well, that comes in at around $40. Now, right now they both have RGB fans, but they are going to be launching a stealth version in a little bit with black fans. Because most ITX users, well, you don't really need the RGB puke in your build anyway. So maybe you're gonna be able to save a few dollars and move to something that is just black. So this is the Gladius Astral. We've gone from a tiny ITX cooler to CryoRig's flagship. Now look, it, when you look at this thing, it looks like your typical dual 120 millimeter heatsink. There's really nothing unique about it until you look at the base. So not only do we have that grooved base that I talked about a little bit before, but you have not six, not seven, but 10 heat pipes. So what have they done here? So instead of using heat pipes in a traditional manner where they keep their form throughout the design, well, these ones have actually been compressed. They're still six millimeters thick, but they've been sort of like compressed so their side lies on the contact plate. The reason why they didn't use the traditional mounting method for the heat pipes is very simple, and we've seen it in the past, right? As you add more heat pipes, or at least the six millimeter heat pipes beyond six, well, that base tends to grow and grow and grow and grow to the point where a lot of those heat pipes aren't even anywhere near that IHS or the hotspot. So they're just simply 
not engaged. So what they've done here, supposedly, increases overall thermal efficiency by between 15 and 25%. So basically utilizing those extra heat pipes without having to worry that they're just not gonna be used or just not gonna be transmitting any heat from the base. So in terms of performance, they are gearing this to be the highest performance dual tower 120 millimeter base cooler on the market right now. One other thing that they've added to it is, yes, a digital screen. And I've got a quick comment about this. It's just too dim. This is the maximum output level. And when it's installed in the case, you really can't see it. Now this is a industry-wide problem. You have to install software with this. So what I would like to see is more of a brightness range on these things. They're gonna be in high light environments like this one. They're gonna be in low light environments like in a typical gaming room. But there needs to be a little bit more adaptability for this. But luckily it's also gonna be available without that digital display for a little bit less. So we're looking at $95 US, which is quite expensive for the digital display version and between 80 to $85 for the version without that digital display. It's going to be available starting in July in the US and in Canada. So hopefully we'll get to test it then. So we're going from a massive air cooler to an ITX heatsink, but there's one more thing. And it's, it's sort of a project, right? CryoRig is working on a passively cooled case. And for that, guess who we're going to? Dimitri. I normally don't cover cooling components, but we have something that combines cooling and an enclosure. So this is CryoRig's first entrance into the case market with what they call the LOL. The idea is really cool. We have this giant radiator on the side of the enclosure that will act as your cooling component for the CPU. We have tubes going inside the enclosure. We have a radiator pump with an LCD display on the pump for a little bit of extra flare. But this is the main selling point of the CPU cooling because it is completely passive. It's on the exterior of the enclosure, freeing up lots of room on the interior. And this thing is quite large, but in terms of cooling capacity, it will depend on several factors because it is completely passive. Room temperature is going to matter. Uh, if you do add any cooling, active cooling towards it, it will help, of course, and equivalent in radiator terms. This is about like a 240 radiator cooling, up to 180 watts on the CPU. So pretty decent, but then you're talking about something that is also kind of very niche. When we're looking at passive cooling on ATX side, normally we don't see something like that. You know, we've seen that from Streetcom with their compact enclosures when you're looking at some low power components. But on the ATX side, it's growing. And I would love to see this trend move forward because components are getting hotter on the interior. So if you can remove the ability to cool the CPU with a radiator at the top to the exterior, that frees up a little bit more cooling capacity, I would say, on the interior for the GPU. And even though their messaging here is like fanless, quiet cooling experience, the Cryrig Low is targeted towards including the power supply, including the interior fans, and of course, including our giant radiator on the, uh, on the exterior with the pump going on the inside. The enclosure right now really doesn't matter. It's really in the concept early stages because now we have a different case onto which this massive radiator is attached. And potentially they're thinking of collaborating with other case brands to include just the radiator with the pump going inside with some of the most popular enclosures onto which you'll be able to retrofit this radiator onto a side panel at the back and still have this like passive cooling for your CPU. On the interior, the challenge is like how to route the tubing right now in the concept stages, they're routing on the outside. But of course, in the final production, they'll try to reroute the tubes cleanly, either from the top or from the side, whatever it makes sense for the enclosure. And we're just talking about this as a completely really early stages of a concept enclosure, uh, not even enclosure, more of a concept cooling concept, just because we would love to see the case get slimmer and for it to make sense to have no other fans on the interior because right now they're targeting the null as like completely fanless cooling and stuff but you still need fans for the gpu cooling for example at least an exhaust fan and obviously you don't need to worry about adding active cooling to that radiator uh, under 180 watt cpu but still we would love to see something slimmer and maybe a little modernized so that it's not just a radiator slapped on a traditional you know more generic enclosure like we see here but still i would love to have more passive cooling on the atx side let us know what you think i'm dimitri talk to you later